Okay, so I think everyone has heard of the electric e-bike brand by now. And, you know, if you have, you've probably seen them on just about every RV channel, just about every e-bike channel, and just about everybody who reviews anything remotely related to someone who might know someone who could eventually end up cycling. So electric bikes are absolutely provided to a lot of YouTube reviewers, and they've done a lot of marketing around the brand. But I'm gonna tell you in a very, very honest and concise video, why you should consider the electric e-bike when a lot of folks are probably trying to tell you why you might not want to consider it. So we're going to keep this video positive, but there's a very good reason for that. Hang tight. I'll be right back. Okay, so in front of me, you have the all new electric XP 3.0 e-bike right here. And next to it, you have the relatively new electric premium. So this is the X premium e-bike. And this one has a lot of very unique characteristics. And we're gonna go over the specs of both of these because there is a very good reason why you should look at electric e-bikes. And I think a reason that a lot of people oftentimes discount whenever they see the brand. Because yeah, you see a lot of products that are provided to review channels like myself to showcase, talk about, and give you know this really awesome opinion of. But that awesome opinion should also come with, you know, a great value message, right? Is this something that you should actually spend your money on? And the reason why electric e-bikes, to me, are one of those products that you should spend your money on is because you get more on these bikes than any other comparable bike. And that is probably the number one reason why electric should be a brand that is on your radar if you are looking for this type of e-bike. Now, you guys know I'm a biking enthusiast and I have some very, very expensive high-end mountain bikes. And those mountain bikes cost far, far more than, you know, four sets of these combined. But that's not the purpose in which you ride these bikes. These bikes are cruising bikes. These are the types of bikes that you might take with you on a trip so you can have a very relaxing cruising ride on a bike that you can also get some exercise on if you want to cycle, but you can also use the throttle control up here if you simply want to treat these things like an electric motorcycle going down the road where you don't have to pedal. And what's important about that is there's a lot of folks that want to get into cycling, but you may not have the endurance to go as far as you might want to go. You may be in a national park or state park you may be in a local area and all your friends have bikes and they can go on for 50 miles before they get tired but you may not have that type of endurance or stamina anymore and because of that you don't get the opportunity to enjoy cycling so what electric has done is kind of unique and the reason why it's unique is because this type of bike is certainly not new and when i say that i get hit with so many electric e-bike companies that want to provide me their product for review and evaluation they have this big bold email send it to you for free if you give us an honest evaluation of your bike blah 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 and i've done a few reviews on what i consider to be very unique bikes but the reason why electric stands out is again feature for feature you will not find a bike that is as refined model over model with the features at the price point that they sell for. This bike right here, the X Premium, which is their higher end bike, and it's kind of a new offering from them. They just released it relatively recently um, as a premium option to the standard XP and the XP Lite, which is a model that I also have, but it's essentially a lighter weight model. They removed some of the, the gadgets off of the standard electric e-bike and made something a little bit lighter weight, but for $2,000, which is what this thing MSRP is at, but for you know that $2,000 price point, you're getting features on this bike that those bikes just don't have. It's just not even in their wheelhouse to have. The single biggest standout feature of this bike is where they place the motor. Oftentimes on budget or low cost e-bikes, it's always gonna be a hub driven motor, which is a motor right there in the back. But when you get the electric e-bike premium, you get it with a mid-drive motor. Why is that a big deal? Well, it's a huge deal because a mid-drive type design like this is far more efficient in terms of how it gets power to the ground. And typically this is what you're gonna see on your much higher end, more expensive e-bikes like my Cannondale or Santa Cruz or Specialized, bikes that are easily in the five, six, seven plus thousand dollar range. So to see a mid-drive on a bike in a $2,000 price point is actually very rare. 
Now let's quickly go over some of the specs of this XP Premium electric e-bike. So first of all, it's gonna have pedal assist and throttle, which I think most people are familiar with if you've had electric e-bike. Pedal assist is where you basically set how much effort you wanna to have to put into pedaling for the motor to engage. So you typically are gonna have five settings with electric e-bikes, so you'll have five different pedal assist settings, but pedal assist always requires that you pedal the bike for the motor to kick on. And then you're also going to have the ability to use a twist throttle. So that's going to give you power directly from the throttle so you don't actually have to pedal, which is really nice. It's going to be a class 1, 2, or 3 e-bike. Basically, it's going to give you all the different variations from a type that you have to pedal assist only to the type that you can use a throttle. And it's going to be limited to a top speed of 28 miles per hour with pedal assist. If you're just using the throttle, you'll be able to get up to about 21 miles per hour with each of these bikes. Um, something also with this bike is it has a rack on the back. That's nothing new, but this specific rack can hold up to 55 pounds. So you can use this to hold, you know, a basket with some things in it. And we're really going to get into some insane numbers for that back cargo carrying capacity when we talk about this XP 3.0. Um, this also has a dynamic torque sensor, so it's going to measure how fast you're pedaling to improve the motor responsiveness whenever you're going. This has the 20 inch by 4 inch fat tires on it as well. Which are really nice has an 800 watt mid-drive motor coupled to an 18 amp controller allowing you to use all seven gears with the 32 tooth drivetrain has a suspension fork up front with 80 millimeters of travel which is actually a pretty good amount of travel plus it has a lockout feature so if you don't want it to actually function as a suspension fork you can lock it out so it'll be a rigid fork this also has a dual battery setup so you have a battery here in the center and then you also have a battery right here. This is very unique. You typically don't see things like this on this type of a bike. So yeah, again, in the $2,000 price point to have twin batteries is pretty impressive. And they're both 48 volt batteries and they take about four to six hours to charge between them. Plus because it uses two batteries, it can give you over a hundred mile range. And that's pretty insane. Another big, big feature are the brakes. So disc brakes are certainly not new on electric e-bikes. They've been using disc brakes ever since they came out. But what is new is the fact that they give you hydraulic disc brakes on the XP Premium. So you're getting a much better, more linear, more, more natural feeling braking versus cable driven brakes, which are still standard on the XP. So the XP 3.0 has a cable mechanical disc brake and you can tell by the little cable right there. Whereas Hydraulic disc brakes, you won't see that because they utilize hydraulic fluid inside of a little reservoir right where it says zoom right there. Total bike weight on this thing is 75 pounds and that's with the batteries installed. It is not a light bike. It's not a light e-bike. My Cannondale weighs about 50 pounds. Most e-bikes are about 65 pounds. But again, because you have twin batteries, very large battery packs, they definitely increase the weight of this bike. Um, it is capable of folding in half, though I've kind of found that a feature I don't use very often. Maybe if you're gonna throw it in the back of a small car or a small SUV, or you're gonna pack several of them, you might wanna fold them in half, but because they weigh so much, it's kind of awkward getting them in and out and folding them back in their upright position. But you certainly can fold them if you want, and it comes in handy if you have a truck with a bed cover so you can keep them protected if it starts to rain. Of course, you have your typical display going on up here. You have your power plus your ability to go through your pedal assist modes comes with a nice LED headlight in the front and it also has a tail light here in the rear. Very nice sturdy fenders. The fenders also seem to be improved over previous generations. They actually don't feel as shaky and they don't vibrate as much and make as much noise, which is really nice. On a bike like this, you have a kickstand. A lot of your super high-end bikes don't have kickstands, so it is nice to know that they've included that on here. Very comfortable saddle with a suspension seat post and some springs on the back to make it nice and cushy. The battery on this one mounts also differently than the standard XP. So the standard XP, you split it open, you slide the battery into that tube from the end. On this one, the battery releases from the top here with a key, and you also have the second battery which slides into place right here on the back. So that's pretty much it on this. Again, very, very nice bike, a lot of premium features, but should you get one of these over one of these? If you're looking purely for range, I would say yes. The difference between brakes, hydraulic is a significant difference, but is it so much of a difference that I would recommend just automatically getting it based on that alone? No. 
But the dual batteries on this is really the game changer. That's what allows this bike to excel above just about every other e-bike you can get. The fact that you have over a 100 mile range on this thing on a very, very comfortable platform. Nice front suspension fork, nice suspension saddle, and you can carry some, some stuff with you if you want, some, some gear and some supplies with you, which is really nice. Next, let's take a look at the all new Electric XP 3.0. So a lot of really cool innovative changes here. Some of them cosmetic, but some of them very functional. For instance, they put a new headlight on. So this is the traditional headlight that you get on an XP bike. And this is the new one. You can see it actually uses a projector up front, which is really nice. It actually has a piece of plastic covering it right now that I haven't removed, but a much, much larger assembly, much larger reflector. And the light output on this is superior to the light output on this. This is more kind of like a blotchy center, kind of a spotlight pattern. This one definitely has a much wider pattern to it, which is really nice. They've improved the travel right here for the suspension by like 10 millimeters, so it has a little bit more suspension. You still have a lockout fork on this model as well, so if you don't want to use it as a springy suspension, you can simply lock it out. Both of these bikes utilize a coil suspension up front, so it's not a gas suspension. Um, there's a lot of other little innovative features that they've done. For instance, one that I can really appreciate, they went from a two bolt stem up here to a four bolt stem. So now you have much, much more pressure evenly applied to this and it makes it far more difficult for this to get loose or rattle out of place, which is nice. Still get a ton of adjustability up through the, uh, the actual post up here. They're both running seven speed Shimano gear sets on them. And the gear set that you get are the Tourney. So you actually get a reasonable a reasonable shifting system on this bike and it's not the lowest it's not the highest it definitely rests more along the entry level line however it's still a quality setup that shifts very precisely and accurately which is really nice again you got the same computer on both of them suspension seat post on this specific one you have the battery this is their step over frame versus the standard one which has the the tube that is way up here now, the big, big, big standout feature of this specific bike is the fact that they've now welded on the back rack. So this area back here no longer supports only like 40 or 50 pounds. It supports 150 pounds, which means you could easily put a seat back here and support the weight of an adult. So that's really nice. And it's going to give people who use their electric e-bike to commute around with their children a lot more peace of mind because it's completely welded to the frame. Very, very high quality. It looks really, really good. Coming down here, they actually went to a larger disc rotor size as well. So instead of 160 millimeter rotors, they're running 180 millimeter rotors now. Again, mechanical disc brakes, fenders feel good. Everything seems to be assembled really well. And this is how it's shipped. So whenever you get it out of the box, there's not really any assembly. You simply have to put the handlebar tube into this tube, fold this thing up, turn your saddle around, tighten the bolt right there, and you're ready to ride. Yeah, all the pedals are already mounted. They're foldable pedals so they can collapse if you're gonna fold your bike and you wanna make it a more compact package. The saddle is definitely different and it is very, very comfortable if you're looking for that very wide platform suspension saddle. So you not only have springs in the saddle itself, but you also have a suspension seat post right here. All right, price point of this, about a thousand bucks and oftentimes you can find them on sale. So why is this such a big deal? Because if you look on Amazon or a hundred other places at e-bikes, you will see brands that you've probably never heard of before that look very similar and brag about certain features. But what you'll find is those bikes have very little refinement to them. And when you get them, you feel as if you got a really cheap product, but you still paid upwards of $1,000. You still paid the same amount of money for a bike that has no refinement. What is good about electric is the fact that this is a third generation of the XP. And now they have a premium with a mid mount motor. And whenever you look at e-bikes and you buy one of these cheap ones off of Amazon, you're gonna find out that it's been the same design, same model, everything, the whole time it's ever been on Amazon. There's no improvement. And if something breaks or something goes wrong, you really have no recourse other than maybe send the bike back. 
Whereas electric, they're constantly innovating. They're putting a better saddle on. They're welding on the actual rack to the back. They're putting larger brakes on. They're putting a better headlight up front. They're doing things to innovate their brand and keep it moving forward. You have customer service numbers you can reach out to. You're dealing with a company that's going to ship it here in the States. They understand the biking industry, and they're also trying to tailor specifically to people who travel with e-bikes. So for the price, the value aspect, they're hard to beat. That's really where, where you look at electric e-bike and say, you know, why should I buy one aside from the fact that every YouTube influencer out there says that they're great? Well, they're good bikes. They're not the best. They're not what I would consider to be, you know, a $10,000 e-bike. They don't have some of the, the technology that some of those bikes have, but they do have technology that a lot of those bikes don't have. But what's most important about it is when you're getting electric e-bikes, you're getting a brand that's constantly evolving, constantly improving their product, and trying to deliver a better product to you with every generation. But not only that, they have great customer service. So they work with you if you do have problems, if you have issues. Are you going to have the same experience on one of these bikes if you take it mountain biking or off-roading that you would have with a $10,000 mountain bike? No, because you're paying one-tenth that price. With something like this, you're paying, you know, 20% the cost of a $10,000 mountain bike or an e-bike. You're, you're getting something that will probably do more than you would ever need for it as long as you're not an extreme mountain bike cyclist, as long as you're not taking it over extreme trails or over scenarios and through scenarios that they're just not designed for. But for everyday riding, for getting you around, they've proven to be a pretty dang reliable platform. Most people would probably give it a very, very high review. I know there are people out there that have had issues. Every product that you sell has issues. Some of them do. Some, some percentage of them do. Hopefully you get taken care of in the way that you're hoping you would. But yeah, anytime you buy a product and it doesn't meet your expectation, you're, you're frustrated. I get that. But I think by and large, most people who get electric e-bikes tend to be pretty happy. Anyways, guys, uh, yeah, we'll do other videos, probably on my other channel, taking these around, riding them through different environments, just so you can kind of see what they're about. It's hard to really translate what it's like to ride a bike on camera to you all watching a video but i definitely wanted to give you a good overview of the electric xp 3.0 and the electric x premium guys i'll put a link in the description to both of these bikes if you're interested in these if you haven't had a chance please take a moment subscribe to my channel give me a thumbs up and we'll talk to you again very soon